Hey, greetings folks, it's Professor Fiore. Today we are going to talk about the common bass amplifier. So a common bass amplifier has a few notable characteristics. First, it has non-inverting voltage gain, so the input phase and the output phase are identical. It produces ideally a current gain of unity, so the power gain isn't as high as it would be in say a common emitter amplifier. The input impedance is quite low a lot lower than we would see in either a common emitter or a common collector configuration. So for some applications, you know, your typical audio amplifier, that would be a, a distraction, right? We wouldn't really like that. But for higher frequencies, that's fine. We tend to use lower impedances at higher frequencies. So this is an amplifier that performs well at higher frequencies. Okay. All right. Um, for the DC analysis on this, there's really nothing new here. It's drawn a little bit differently. Typically, I might draw this more like, you know, having the transistor down here, collector come in, and then the emitter, resistor, and power supply would be down here. Of course, in this case, the base would be ground. Of course, our input would be coming in over here on the emitter, which would look a little weird, so I've sort of flipped it around. But this is just a standard uh, bipolar power supply, in other words, a, a, a dual emitter bias. So we've got a 15 volt collector supply going down through the collector resistor into the collector of the transistor, and then a negative 10 volt emitter supply VE -E, connected to the emitter resistance and back to the emitter. All right, so that nice path for DC current like this. Then we have a coupling cap and a load off the collector, and the input signal comes in to the emitter. All right, so the base is common, hence the term common base amplifier. All right. Okay, so quick DC analysis. The base is at ground. We can say that the emitter would be about minus 0.7 volts DC. So we'd get about 9.3 volts sitting across RE and 9.3 divided by 18K is gonna be right around half a milliamp, right? A smidge more. Now we take that half mil, we go through RC of 10K. That should give us about five volts, a little over five volts. Subtract that from the power supply, and our collector should be sitting just under 10 volts DC. All right. No, by the way, knowing the, knowing the current, we're going to need this anyway. So knowing the current is about half a mil, we can find the R prime when we do the AC analysis. R prime E, constant 26 millivolts divided by the current. So 26 millivolts divided by half, divided by half a milliamp is going to give us right around 50 ohms for the R prime E. Before we do that, before we look at the AC, let's do a quick DC and uh, cross-check our quick approximation, see what we wind up with. All right, so the emitter we said should be around minus 0.7. Well, we're getting negative uh, 635 millivolts, so that looks good. The uh, Let's go over here to the collector. We were talking a little bit under 10 for that and we're getting 9.8 and change, so that looks good. Current-wise, looking at the emitter, uh, the emitter resistor, we get 520 mics. So again, just a smidge over half a mil. We're looking good, all right, everything's good. Okay, now, switching over to the AC equivalent. We would, of course, short out the caps, the two coupling caps. And the power supplies would be replaced with their internal resistance, which would be a short. So we would have RC, imagine just flipping this down, we'd have RC going to ground out here, and we'd have RE going to ground out here. Right? So the input couples in at the emitter, and then off we go. Now we're going to just replace the transistor with its simplified model, which is an R prime E over here and a current source over here, right? the collector current source. So let's take a look at that. Alrighty, so here's our transistor model, right? The R prime we found uh, that works out to be approximately 50.3 ohms. Now I'm drawing the IC flowing in this direction for a positive portion of the sine wave coming in, right? So for that first positive portion of the sine wave, we have this polarity plus to minus down to ground. So we would have this direction of current flow through IC, through that current source. All right, so the input signal comes in. It essentially drops across this pair, right? That's going to establish one of three things that we're interested in. The input impedance, the output impedance, and the voltage gain. That, can, that current that's developed, right, 
that's essentially the same as IC, IE and IC as typical are virtually the same. So that current continues to flow out here and then flows through this parallel combo of the DC bias resistor and the load. So this part is really no different than what we might have seen um, you know, on a common emitter amplifier. All right. So the three things I mentioned, input impedance, output impedance, and voltage gain. Let's start with the output impedance because that's an easy one. That's really no change from the common emitter. We're sitting out here at the load, we're looking back in this way, and what do we see? Well, we see the RC value, and then we see the current source, which ideally is infinite. So all we see for an output impedance is the DC biasing resistor at the collector, in this case 10K. So it's the same thing that we saw in a common emitter. Now the input impedance, right? We're sitting over here on the other side of our gen, right? Right here. So I'm looking this way, looking in, and what we see is RE, the biasing resistor, then we see our prime E, and this point of our prime E, of course, is going to ground. That, can, that current that's developed just continues to flow through this direction. This is a current source, all right? So we're just going to say that IE flows through here, and it's continuing on. There is a small IB, but basically IE and IC virtually the same size. So this input voltage, right, what I've labeled VN, this drops across a parallel combination of the biasing resistor and R'E. prime e. Clearly, the vast majority of the input currents going through R'E, prime e, right, 50 ohms in our case versus 18K, you could just about forget the RE, the biasing resistor, and just say, hey, this is really the only thing that matters. So that parallel combo is what establishes the input impedance, RE in parallel with R prime e, in our case, just about 50 ohms. In any case, that current continues out. Now we want to look at the gain. So that current flows out through here and establishes the V load. And because it is flowing in this direction, we get this polarity plus to minus top to bottom that matches the input polarity plus to minus top to bottom. So the output is in phase with the input. Unlike a common emitter amplifier, which is inverting, output phase and input phase are identical. Okay, now, your voltage gain is going to be, as always, V load divided by Vn. So what's your V load? Well, it's the impedance times the current through it. So the current through it's going to be IC, and the impedance is this pair, the biasing resistor of IC, RC in parallel with our load. The input end is similar. It's uh, the current times the resistance. That current, again, we can approximate IE, is flowing through our prime e. So you think of that as a formula. You know, your V load is IC times this AC value of resistance, you know, which we usually show as a lowercase r and RC. And then the input end would be the emitter current times the R prime e. Well, emitter and collector currents are virtually the same. They cancel out. So you basically have a ratio of resistances. The AC collector resistance divided by R prime e. In other words, the same equation that you have for a non-swamped common emitter amplifier, right? So just to recap, Zn is basically the emitter biasing resistor in parallel with our prime e. So 18 in parallel with 50.3 is approximately 50.3 ohms. As I said initially, small input impedance, right? You wouldn't want a 50 ohm input impedance when you're in your typical audio amplifier. Your uh, load out here, the AC value of RC, is just the biasing resistor in parallel with the load. So 10K in parallel 2.5K, that's a 4 to 1 ratio. So 4 to 1 ratio, we take 4 fifths of the smaller, 4 fifths of 2.5K is 2K. So that's what we have out here is a 2K. And then finally, for the uh, load voltage and, and the gain, we would say V load is the current IC times RC. And Vn is the input current, emitter current, times R prime e. Those two currents cancel, roughly, and we can say that the gain is approximately Rc over R prime e, no inversion. So the gain is going to be 2k for Rc divided by 50.3 for the R prime e, and that works out to just under 40, right? We get about 39.7 for that. Now, I want to refer you back to what's going on up front. If your Zn is about 50 ohms and the generator internal impedance is 50 ohms, 
we would expect that whatever we throw in on the generator is going to split 50-50%. In other words, if I were to put in 2 millivolts back here, I would expect 1 millivolt would be lost internally on the generator and 1 millivolt would get to Vn. So you could consider the loaded gain for this particular amplifier would be about half of this. It'd be a little bit under 20. You know, we'd be looking at, let's just call it 19 for uh, the effective gain. So if I put one millivolt in, right, I'd only get half a millivolt here. That half would be multiplied by nearly 40, which would give us, you know, a little under 20 millivolts out here, right? So one in, 20 out, your loaded front end gain all the way through. Um, just under 20, right? So I would, like I said, expect to see somewhere around 19 millivolts out here. All right, so let's go back to our circuit and do a simulation, see what we get. So we've already done the, C, the, the DC. Let's do a transient analysis just to um, make sure that the phases and everything are what they're supposed to be. So as usual, I'm going to skip the first millisecond, the turn on transient, and we're just going to look at two cycles this is a one millivolt, one kilohertz input, right? So that's two milliseconds. That's going to give us two cycles. I'm using a really small input because since the input impedance is basically dictated by R prime E and R prime E is a function of the input current, if you put large signals into this amplifier, you're going to get a lot of distortion. Now, there's no swamping to mitigate that. So um, when we get through this, I'll change the values up and you can see just how much distortion we do get if we put too large of a signal into it. But in any case, let's take our transient analysis here and see what we get. All righty. So I am going to change colors on the, uh, let's say the VGen over here, which is this one. It's kind of hard to see. So let's um, turn that into a more striking color. What do we have here? How about blue? All right, that looks better. Okay, so we can see that the uh, VGen and the VN, the blue and the maroon, are in phase, and VLoad is also in phase, right? If this was a common emitter amplifier, that big green wave would be going like this. Let's zoom in just so that we can verify some amplitudes and whatnot. So let's see, maybe, yeah, that should be good enough. All right. So again, the VGen, this should be one millivolt. I can see there's my one millivolt and that's hitting perfectly. And then the maroon is the VN as we expected. We should lose about half. This, by the way, verifies that the input impedance is roughly 50 ohms. And we can see what's going on there. I'm just going to put a cursor on here just to verify that we are getting that roughly half a millivolt. So I'm getting 500 and almost 531 microvolts. So just a smidge over half, which would indicate that the input impedance is a little over 50 ohms and we approximated at 50.3. So that's looking good. All right, so I'm getting 514 and change there, 530. So we are getting a little distortion here, right? I mean, ideally, these two points, the positive and negative points, would be identical. And we see a little bit of asymmetry. All right, so there's a little bit of distortion going on there. But, you know, not too bad. All right. Okay, let's zoom back out here. I mean, at least by eye, you know, at least by eye, those waveforms look halfway decent. Okay. Now, I'll tell you what, why don't we come in here and do a distortion analysis? Because I want to see this later anyway. Okay, we're getting, um, yeah, call it 0.2%, 0.2% THD. All right. So, you know, not super hi-fi, but really not too bad, All right? All right, so to recap, we're getting this, we're getting this gain Good gain. Let's see if it is, in fact, as big as we were hoping for. We, we were looking for um, a gain of about 19 or so, which would give us about 19 millivolts at the output. So I'm getting 18 and a half on the positive peak, 
and 19.2 on the negative peak, right? So that again, that asymmetry is due to the change in R prime E, the distortion. So we're getting about the amplitude that we would expect, right? One millivolt in, we get about half a millivolt at V in from that generator, and then that gets multiplied up. And at the output, at the load, we're getting, you know, 18, 19 millivolts thereabouts, right? So it's just a smidge shy, but it looks like it's doing okay. All right. All right. So what about this distortion? I'm going to change the sine wave. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. I'm not going to make it crazy huge, and I'm not going to make it go into like major clipping or anything, but suppose I put in 20 millivolts. All right. Well, that should give us about 10 millivolts at Vn. That would get multiplied by the gain of 40, and we'd be looking at just under, you know, 400 millivolts at the load. Not a very big signal. But let's see what actually comes out of this. All right. Um, if you're used to looking at sine waves, you should notice immediately this thing is not symmetrical. This top is definitely squished compared to this bottom, which is elongated. And we can prove that by throwing a cursor on here. All right, so we're getting 339. If you want to be generous, we call it 340 millivolts there, which is quite a bit low. We were expecting a little bit below 400, you know, maybe 380, 390 or something like that. The negative peak, however, is over 400, right? We're getting 410 plus. So 410 negative and, you know, 340, 341 for positive. That is not perfectly symmetrical. What's our distortion going to work out to? We had 0.2% before, as a reminder. Oh, look at that. 3.887, you know, 3.9, 3.9%. Ooh, that's definitely not hi-fi, all right? It's not crunchy rock guitar distortion, but it's not hi-fi, all right? So, to recap, we can talk about an input impedance that's roughly equal to our prime E, an output impedance that's equal to your biasing resistor, your RC, and a gain that's non-inverting and is equal to the AC collector resistance, RC, divided by the R prime E. All right. We wind up with a fairly low Z in, a fairly high Z out, and a decent voltage gain, but really no current gain because the input current is emitter current, the output current is collector current. All right. Beauty. We'll see you next time.